Jake LaMotta challenges French idol Marcel Serdan for the World Middleweight Championship. Detroit, 16th of June, 1949. We pick up the action here in round five. Jake LaMotta in dark trunks with a white waistband is the number one challenger in the division. He is five feet eight and weighed in at an even 160 pounds. Serdan, five feet seven, weighed in at 159 and a half pounds. From start to finish, this was a rousing battle as LaMotta and Serdan stayed toe to toe. Serdan won the middleweight championship with a KO win in 12 rounds over Tony Zale in September of 1948. In round eight, the action never lets up. LaMotta has had recent wins over Joey DeJohn, Robert Villamain, Tony Gennaro, and Tommy Bell, and a KO victory over knockout puncher Bob Satterfield. Serdan was a courageous boxer. In this fight, a fall in the first round injured Serdan's left shoulder. You will notice he can't use the arm at all. Serdan throwing only one punch, the right. LaMotta knows it, and although he respects Serdan, he wants that title. In round nine, LaMotta, always a great puncher, stays close, trying to minimize Sir Dan's right. LaMotta in dark trunks with the white waistband sends his victory, but the gallant Frenchman won't give up, trying to get one punch home that will end it all. But LaMotta, who can give it as well as take it, steps up the pace. Sir Dan still unable to use that left hand, still using one arm, his right. The end comes dramatically in the 10th round when Sir Dan cannot answer the bell. This left arm, injured in a fall in the first round, proves Sir Dan's undoing, and Jake LaMotta is the new middleweight champion. LaMotta takes on Laurent Dautille, Detroit, 13th of September, 1950. The title is on the line, but LaMotta is far behind on points, going into the 15th and final round. LaMotta has won only four rounds up to this point in a bruising fight. LaMotta appears to be very tired, sagging against the ropes. He seems ripe for a KO, but is LaMotta playing possum? Dautil, a good boxer-puncher, has beaten LaMotta before. Back in 1949, the Frenchman took a 10-round decision, and tonight only has to last the round, and he will be crowned the new middleweight champion. When the overconfident Dautil moves in for the finish, Jake LaMotta suddenly opens up. Dautil knows he's been fooled and tries to hold and run, but LaMotta, always devastating inside, won't let him get away. It's LaMotta to the body and to the head. Against the ropes, Dautil is in trouble. Dautil has knocked out some good men, such as Steve Valois and Charlie v Zivic, but tonight LaMotta has come on. Both men blaze away. It's a real Donnybrook. But LaMotta, rallying from the brink of defeat, knocks Dautil down and almost through the ropes. And LaMotta scores a dramatic knockout over the very capable Laurent Dautil. It's Jake LaMotta, one of the greatest crowd pleasers of all time, winner and still middleweight champion of the world. LaMotta meets Eugene Heston. Detroit, 5th of March, 1952. Here we go to round one. That's LaMotta in the dark trunks. Hairston in the white. LaMotta, nicknamed the Bronx Bull, is 31 years old. Weighs 168 pounds. Gene Hairston, known as Silent Hairston, 161 and a half pounds, giving LaMotta a six and a half pound weight pull. Hairston is only 23 years old, eight years younger than LaMotta. Over 10,000 fans jammed into Olympia Stadium tonight. LaMotta's a great favorite here in Detroit. He's put on some of his most spectacular fights here, including the one in which he knocked out middleweight champion Marcel Serdan of France and won the middleweight crown back in 1948. 
Lamata lost his title to Sugar Ray Robinson 18 months before this fight. And since then, he hasn't been able to win a fight. The experts say he's all washed up. Before the fight, Lamata promised his father that if he lost to Hairston tonight, he'd quit. But he also said if he beat Hairston or made a good showing, he was going to demand a fight with Joey Maxim for the light heavyweight crown. Just a few seconds left to the round, and look at Lamata go. There's the end of round one. In the second round, both boys continue to feel one another out, hitting to the body, and the round is pretty even. Now, here we are in round three. Ten rounder between former middleweight champion Jake LaMotta in the dark trunks, Gene Silent Hairston from New York in the white trunks. Gene gets his nickname from the fact that he's a deaf mute. But that disability hasn't been a handicap in his fight career. He entered the pro ring in 1947. He's had 58 fights and lost only 10. He's considered one of the leading contenders for Sugar Ray Robinson's middleweight title. Both men well equipped physically as fighters. Jake LaMotta, the bull, has a short neck, broad shoulders, and he bulls his way around the ring. He likes to come in swinging with both hands. He's always moving forward. He can take a punch, too. He's never been knocked down in his entire ring career. 12 years, 91 fights. No one has ever been able to knock him to the canvas. Gene Hairston is a very good boxer and a very hard hitter with both hands. Heston's favorite combination is the one-two, left jab and right cross. But he also hits hard to the body with hooks and uppercuts. The referee's got to be extra careful tonight because Heston can't hear the gong at the end of the round. He's liable to continue swinging away, and the referee's got to watch that. Of course, LaMotta's got to watch it, too, because unless he keeps that guard up and keeps fighting until Hairston stops, he's liable to get hit after the bell. time, Hairston worked for LaMotta. Jake owned several parking lots in New York, and Hairston was one of his parking lot attendants. In the fourth and fifth rounds, Hairston maintains a fast pace, but LaMotta slows up a little. Now here we are in round six. Before the fight, Hairston's manager said their plan tonight was to hit LaMotta to the body, wear him down. Well, so far, Hairston's been following that plan very well but he's also been getting some hard shots to LaMotta's head. Here in Michigan, each round is scored on a point system. And before the fight, Hairston's manager asked the Michigan officials to watch LaMotta, claiming that Jake placed possum in the early parts of the rounds. 
lets the other fighter do all the fighting until the last 30 seconds, and then comes through with a flurry, so it still look good. Hairston's a two-to-one favorite with the experts tonight. But the crowd is all for Lamada. They'd like to see him win. He's given Detroit's fights fans some of their finest bouts. And they'd hate to see him quit the ring, which he's promised to do if he loses this fight. Neither will give a step when they're slugging it out. It's been a hard, clean fight so far. The referee hasn't had to park them very much. Very little clinching. There's the end of round six. In the seventh, eighth, and ninth rounds, the boys slam one another all over the ring. And it's pretty even, although Hairston may have a slight edge. Now here we are in the tenth and final round. Ten round middleweight bout between Eugene Hairston and Jake Lamotta, the Bronx Bull. Former middleweight champion here at Detroit's Olympia Stadium. Lamotta in the dark trunks. This is the round that could very well tell the entire story. It's been pretty even up to now. Lamotta's whole future as a fighter may depend on this tenth and final round. Lamotta's forcing the fight more in this round, and the crowd's all rooting for him. He's their favorite, regardless as to what the experts say. After all that punishment, both have taken for nine grueling rounds. These boys are in very fine shape here in this tenth and final round. Lamana seems to be hurt, but you can't tell. He may be playing possum. That's an old trick of his. Yes, he was. There he goes. Not much time left. Look at Lamada go. He just took a few from Hairston to let Gene become careless. Now he's going after him. fight. The referee gives it to Hairston, but the judges call it a draw, and under Michigan rules, it's a draw by a split decision. Jake LaMotta meets Norman Hayes for the second time to avenge a previous defeat. Detroit, 9th of April, 1952. Round one. LaMotta in the dark trunks. Weighs 167 and a half tonight. Hayes, 162. This is the second meeting between these boys. Hayes won a close decision in Boston 10 months before.
Fight fans all over the country are watching this one tonight. Since LaMotta lost his middleweight title to Sugar Ray Robinson a year and a half before, most of the fight experts have said Jake was all through. But if Jake can beat Hayes tonight, he'll be back in the running as a top contender. Round one. In the second round, Lamata scores with very hard punches to head and body. Now round three of this ten rounder between Jake Lamata in the dark trunks and Norman Hayes here in Detroit Olympia Stadium. Lamata's ten years older than Hayes. Jake's never claimed to be a great boxer. He's strictly a slugger. Loves to keep moving in and punch away. Jake's never been knocked down. Hayes has been in the ring for three years. He's 21 years old. He's won 21 fights. Six by knockout. He's not a great hitter, but he's considered one of the best of the younger fighters in the middleweight division. Referee warning Hayes to keep his punches up. Notice that Hayes is using a bolo punch tonight. That's a new punch for him. and fifth rounds, Hayes slams LaMotta with hard shots to the body, and Jake seems to slow up a bit. Now round six. Hayes in the white trunks. Big crowd jammed into Olympia Stadium tonight. Detroit fans love LaMotta. He's always fought his best here. Beat Marcel Sedan for the title here three years before.
Those hard rights to the body by Lamana really take a lot out of Hayes. In the seventh, eighth, and ninth rounds, Lamata speeds up the pace and outpunches Hayes. Now the tenth and final round of this battle between Jake Lamata, former middleweight champion, and Norman Hayes of Boston. Hayes in the white trunks. Close up to now, whoever takes this round could well win the fight. The referee's warned Hayes several times about no blows. Evens the score with Hayes. Jake LaMotta wins a unanimous decision. Jake LaMotta fights Bob Murphy. Detroit, 11th of June, 1952. Round one. LaMotta in the white trunks. Weighs 170 pounds tonight. Quite heavy for Jake. Set out crowd here at Olympia tonight. 16,000 fans. is a great favorite in Detroit. He's had 22 fights here, including his knockout of Marcel Serdan for the middleweight title. The end of round one. In the second, third, and fourth rounds, Amata scores heavily with hard swings to head and body. Now round five of the 10-rounder between Jake Lamata, the Bronx Bull, and Sailor Irish Bob Murphy here at Detroit Olympia. Lamata's been fighting for 11 years. He's been stopped four times by TKOs, but he's never been knocked off his feet. He's won 81 fights, 28 by knockout.
Herpes had 73 bouts. He's won 61. 56 by knockout. Great knockout record. These men like to swing from the heels, but Murphy likes to work in close, while Amada likes distance for his sweeping blows to the body. Round, Murphy out punches Lamata, and by the end of the eighth, Jake is very tired and shaky. Now round nine. they fought, Lamata was eight pounds heavier than tonight. Afterward, Jake said he was carrying too much fat, wasn't in condition. But even at 170, Lamata seemed to run out of gas. Murphy's been coming up awfully fast in the last few rounds. Looks like Lamata's going to have plenty of trouble trying to last this fight out. Comeback by Lamada. <laughs> Murphy saved by the bell. Round ten of this fight between Jake Lamada, the Bronx Bull of New York and Sailor Irish Bob Murphy here at Detroit Olympia. Amata in the white trunks. Murphy looks out on his feet. He hasn't got over that awful beating in the ninth round. Lamata 
start confusing Murphy by going into the southpaw style. That's not new for Jake. He was a southpaw early in his career. stand up. The crowd screaming for a knockout. The matter trying desperately to score it. By unanimous decision. In the last of his 106 professional fights, Jake LaMotta confronts Billy Kilgore. Miami Beach, 14th of April, 1954. Billy Kilgore is in the black trunks, and Jake LaMotta, former world middleweight champion, is wearing white. LaMotta has been boxing professionally for 13 years, since 1941, when he won a decision over Charlie Mackley in New York. Since then, Jake has fought in 104 professional bouts, of which he has entered 30 by knockout. This is the 44th professional bout for Billy Kilgore in black trunks, in a career which began in 1947 seven years ago. Kilgore entered his first fight against Ray Raymond in New Orleans with a stunning first round knockout. Jake always presses. He doesn't like any distance between he and his opponent. A good combination by Jake LaMotta. And there's the end of round one. Round two was scored evenly. Here in round three, LaMotta continues to keep Billy on the defense as he had in the first two rounds. Jake is looking to take over, but Billy is hanging in there tough. Billy using that stay away jab. Five years ago in 1949, LaMotta met Marcel Serdan in Detroit and won the world middleweight title with a 10th round knockout. Those are bruising right hands by Jake LaMotta, but Billy comes right back.
Lamata pouring it on. Jake all over Billy Kilgore here in round three. Billy is fighting back hard. A wild right by Billy Kilgore misses at the end of round three. In rounds four through six, LaMotta kept up the pressure, but Kilgore gave as much as he took. Here in round seven, it's still anybody's fight. This is the third fight this year for Billy, who has previously KO'd Jimmy Herring in two rounds here in Miami Beach. But a month later, he lost a hard-fought 10-round decision to Walter Cartier. LaMotta had taken a one-year hiatus from boxing last year, but he is making a very strong comeback, having won his two other fights with early knockouts this year. Those are jolting punches by LaMotta. Seventh round. In rounds eight and nine, LaMotta kept pressing Kilgore, but Billy fought back hard. This is the tenth and final round. The fight is very close here going into the tenth round. Kilgore seems to be coming on strong. Billy trained very hard for this fight. He's in magnificent condition. Jake LaMotta trying to use that left jab to keep Billy off of him. Kilgore landing ripping punches here in the 10th round. Billy could take it if he wins this round. Jake looks very tired here in the 10th. Jake comes right back, ripping punches to Billy's body and jaw. It's all Jake here at the end of the 10th round. What a turn. Billy comes right back. The crowd loves it. What a sensational ending to this marvelous fight.
This one's going to be very close. Jolting punches by Billy Kilgore. And there's the bell ending this sensational 10th round. The judges award a very close decision to Billy Kilgore in a shocking upset win.